Okay, guys, we are here today with Rick Landell. Huge honor for us. He invented the movement 1% better every day. He has even a book. And uh, so he's going to explain to us a little more about what's this. And he made something very cool. He made a 500 day challenge where he would try to do 1% better every day. And the challenge was all about squat, right, uh, Rick? That's right. It, it, was all, it was all about squatting. It was about uh, making sure that I improved in some type of squat every single day. And, and it didn't necessarily have to be the number, you know? Sometimes it's just the flexibility. Uh, it could be your depth. It could be just, just getting to the gym, you know? Just getting out into my garage to get out here to do the lift. Or, you know, it, it could be anything. I mean, whatever, whatever you, uh, you could improve upon, that's what the goal was. And, and it's all about giving 100% effort you get 1% better every single day if you give 100% effort. Now, this 500 day challenge, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I squatted every day for 500 days in a row. We video documented it. And everybody said, don't, like, you can't do this. And, you know, I, I had talked to, the, I had talked to uh, this man, John Bros, and he had, he had trained in Bulgaria. And, and I'd, I'd showed up at his gym and we had discussed, you know, this, this methodology of, you know, you could lift every single day. These guys lift all every day. Uh -huh. I'm like, that's not, what they, that's not what they say in America. You know, I've, I've been around for a while. They, they say no. And I tried every type of periodization training. I, I did, and I was very successful with it. Uh -huh. Nowhere near the numbers that I gained by doing this every single day. When you do something every single day, your numbers, they fluctuate, they go up and down. Uh, but what ends up really happening is you, you get into different parts of where you might be weak. So not just physical. I got it, mental. Mental. Yeah. And then sometimes, man, you, all you got is negative thoughts going on, and then all you got is your body just so sore, and then now you start to get into this kind of like finding your own uh, willpower and your own spirit and you you have to overcome your emotions and you have to come overcome your soreness and when you can do that by by doing just one percent better every single day you're ready every single day to do anything you want to do you don't want to just be a black belt on on Monday and then you got to wait until Thursday uh, to be a black belt again right we, we're black belts every day yep. and the 1% better movement, it's a, it's a way for you and, and everyone to, to find a way to improve no matter what's going on. And uh, for, me, for me, guys, it was, it was, it was a big, big stage in my life. I, uh, during this 500 day challenge, I got divorced. I, I, uh, my, my younger brother, who was my training partner as a kid, he, he grew up with me. I, I, it was like I raised him, he died. He, uh, he had an opioid, opioid overdose. It was, it was right before it. I got it. And I was in such a place, guys, that I was like, man, how am I going to dig myself out of here? You know? I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm working hard. How am I going to go from where I just feel just so sad and so terrible? How am I going to step out into the world and do something today? And you know, it was, it was this. It was, it was getting 1% better. And I knew I could do at least that much. And so I took on a new project of squatting every day, and then it just exploded. And this movement has just exploded. I mean, it's everywhere. World champions are talking about it everywhere. I mean, uh, I, I, I saw The Rock tweeted it. I mean, people out there are, are talking about just get 1% better every day. It's, it's, uh, it's a movement. It's exciting. And it's, it's, it's spreading to everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter where you're at in your life. You can get 1% better today, no matter yeah, what. I agree. No, I love it. No, and, and guys, I think what's very interesting is the consistency that, that when you're in this movement, you become very consistent, right? Because you, you want to do 1% better every day. So you're going to work out every day. Every day? So, every day. You want to get better at jujitsu? Yeah. 1%. What, what's something that you can do today to get better? Just, just find something. And you know, it, 
it doesn't have to be the number. I can't, I can't express that enough because there's too many variables in the human life to quantify with just, just a pound or a kilo. There's flexibility. There's, there's the ability to control your own mind. There's the, there's the, the, the concept to just step back out there after you failed. If you've ever failed and then gone, man, I don't think I can keep going to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a step forward today. I'm going to, I'm going to try again. And when you do that and you, you work to get 1% better every day, you're constantly living in the unknown. Uh, Always. Because you've never been there before. You've never been that good before. And if you're constantly living in the unknown, it's, it's a really beautiful thing, guys, because you're, you're, you're always finding out new things that you're capable of doing. You know, you, you, you don't have to rest on your past accolades because that's not who we are. That was, that's an expression of things that we've accomplished, but that's not who we are. We're looking all the time to improve and this can do that for you. Squatting, yes, it will help your combat. It will help your jujitsu. It will help your willpower. There's things inside of here that I learned through squatting that I couldn't have learned any other way. Only here. I didn't learn it. I didn't learn it collegiate wrestling. I didn't learn it in the jujitsu room. I had to learn it with the bar and, and uh, it'll benefit everybody's life. But you can do 1% better in your family life, in your jujitsu life, in your friends, in anything. Yeah. And guys, it's very impressive like how quick he becomes good on things. So for example, Rick is probably the youngest American to get a black belt uh, in jiu-jitsu. He got his black belt, he was 19 years old from Peter Sauer. And uh, he started this movement in, was like 2016, right? Yeah, 2000, right, right at the beginning of 2016. So guys, he started squatting uh, in 2016 and two years later he was breaking the record of the state of Nevada with uh, how, how many pounds did it? So the, the, the state of Nevada record, if you look it up online, is 510 pounds and, and I was able to do 615 pounds. And that's, that's impressive. It, it is, and it, it, was so, it was so amazing because it was outside of the box. I mean, it was, it was what everybody said you can't do. And everybody said, yeah, you can't lift every day. You have to, you have to recover. Haven't you heard of overtraining? And, and it was strange because there, there was no overtraining. There was improvement. There was getting 1% better at something else. I can't overtrain because I'm, I'm working on something else. You can't go past a certain point. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna work to where you get injured. You're not gonna work until that spot. You're always just gonna work on areas that you can improve on. And man, when you do that, it compounds. And it's like compound interest. And weird stuff starts happening before you know it. You're sitting here with a couple black belts and some cameras, and you got a book, and you're lifting hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and the world's listening to you, listening to you on, a, on a movement, and you're changing people's lives. It's, it's amazing. No, I agree. You gotta, you gotta just, you just gotta live it though. It's a campaign. It's not a daily, th it's not just tomorrow. We're gonna do it tomorrow. This is a campaign. So a couple things I've noticed that I've been so impressed with is that, one, you're such a real guy. You're, you proudly talk about your failures. So when I first heard about this, I started trying it myself and said, wow, this isn't working. I'm not lifting 1% more every single day. And you said, no, 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 that's not it. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the wild swings and fluctuations you might have? Yeah, definitely, definitely. That, I would have fluctuations where I would, I would one day, when I started this, I was, I, I was doing like 275 pounds. I slowly kept working my way up. I'd get up to like 350 pounds. All of a sudden I could only squat the bar. Maybe not even the bar. I mean literally a PVC pipe and going down to the ground, it was so painful. That, that then, from the soreness, that then I started to learn about a different part of myself that had to grow, that had to grow up. It's that part of me that said, hey, you know, even though you're sore right now, and even though this hurts, and even though everybody around you said, you don't have to do it, you're going to do it. And that's where I got 1% better. And so then, these fluctuations would happen like that. It'd be a bar, PVC pipe. I'd go up 100 pounds, go down 100 pounds, go up 200 pounds. I mean, you, your numbers can radically change. 
but the effort never changes. I think that's it's where a lot of people, a lot of people would get stuck. They're, they're working for a while at it, they get better, all of a sudden they have this huge regression, so it seems, and someone says, ah, I must be doing it wrong, and I change it up, it's not for me. That's but right. At that point, that's where you held the faith. Discipline. You, okay. Right there. That was the part that, that was the part that I was able to push through, where somebody else would go, oh man, it's not working, you know, this job's not working, let's try a new job. You know, let's not let's not like try to fight through this. Let's not try to fight through tough times. Let's uh, we're having a little struggle here. You know, I'm I'm not a very good artist, and now I'm I'm going to go into writing, and then you you jump from writing to something else. You you have to stay consistent, and you have to keep working on it every single day, even if your numbers are moving like this. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the numbers. The numbers will take care of themselves. That's, that's the amazing thing. It's the effort and the attitude. And if you have the right intention, you will only get better. You will only improve. I mean, how, how long are you guys gonna train Jiu Jitsu? Long time. Uh, long time. Till you die, probably? Uh, Forever? Uh, yeah, so, so the time element doesn't matter. For sure, yeah. Right? Uh, that's the same with the 1% improvement movement. Becoming 1% better. The, there's no time element here. It's just how much better can we improve as human beings in any given thing every single day. One more question I have for you is that, I mean, that, that's just so incredible. Kind of the science of the method. What, so you've, I mean, there, there's some pretty famous strong guys that have come here that look like that if you were to take bets, every single person would bet on that person to be able to squat more than you can, but you squat more than they can. What is the science that allows you at about 175 pounds to out squat really jacked 250 pounders? Now, this is huge, but inside of the American culture and worldwide culture, we've gotten into hypertrophy training. Hypertrophy training is when you cause the muscle to expand and grow. And it looks great. If you go to, you go to Mr. Olympia, those guys are just freaking jacked, you know? up on that stage, their muscles are just incredible. But it doesn't necessarily mean their muscle got stronger. So what, what ends up happening is by doing one, two, or three reps, we're causing, I'm causing my muscle to fire all at one time. I don't, I don't do it slow, it has to happen all at once, like flicking on a light. It all comes on at once. And when your neurological system sends that brain impulse down into your muscle fibers, it, it, it should be like an explosion. Not like click on this light, click on that light, click on this light. That's when it looks janky. That's when you're like moving weird. When you can explode all at one time, that's when weight moves quickly and that's when you're powerful. And that's when you get really, really, really strong because you're training your neurological system to fire all my muscles at once. Where maybe somebody else, they're only using their quads. They don't know how to use their adductors. They don't know how to use their glutes at the exact same time. This training method teaches you how to do that and it teaches you how to get into your neurological system and build it out. They've, they've done studies on it and in these other countries, these Eastern Bloc countries who have done this back in the 80s and 70s, they were, they were looking at how the myelin sheath that, that surrounds your axon, it would actually grow. And when that grows, more, uh, more impulse can be sent through the axon, causing more stimulus into the muscle. Well, that's huge. That's power. So I, I do understand what's going on inside of, of, of all culture out there. Everybody wants to look good. You go to the yeah. beach, I want to look good. Yeah. You know, you, you, want to be, you want to be attractive, you want, to, you, want to, you want to look the part, but this type of lifting, this isn't going to make you that big, huge guy. You don't have to, you don't have to be on steroids, you don't, have to, you don't have to take all the crazy supplements. You, you literally can just focus on improving what's naturally inside of you. And, and I'll tell you, all of us have some pretty amazing natural attributes. When we, start to, when we start to lock into those muscle fibers and we start to lock into that neurological system, a guy like me at 175 pounds can start lifting like 485 pounds. And it's, it's because I'm doing it all at once. 
Sets of eight will send you into a growth phase. Sets of one, two, and three, that'll keep you, that'll keep you in that getting strong phase. And if you focus on speed, now you're focusing on power. And if you're focusing on power, you're gonna get really, really strong. Yeah. Okay. And guys, yeah, Rick has worked with a ton of like very famous MMA fighters. So can you mention some names, though, Rick? Yeah, I, you know, I've been I've been very lucky. I uh, I got to work with uh, Greg Jackson's team down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Guys, I was I was on Tough 17 with John Jones. Um, I worked with Misha Tate, Ron, Ronda Rousey. She's endorsing my book. Can you believe that? How uh -huh. awesome! Um, Travis Brown, Carlos Condit. Uh, Frank Mir, I mean, the, the list goes on and on uh, of all the guys I was, I was lucky enough to work with. I had, I, had, uh, I had a phenomenal coaching career helping these guys get to, get to world championships and the next level. And guys, I think especially for grapplers, the main thing you gotta work is like legs and lower back, right? So I think the squats is probably the best exercise you can do for. Right? De definitely, because it, it's pressure on your entire body. And what they've proven is when you have all that stimulus going on on your entire body, your body will naturally start to release more human growth hormone, naturally. So you don't, you don't gotta take something, you, it'll release it, but you gotta put in some work. It's gotta think maybe you've fought a lion or something. Yeah. Then it will also release more testosterone while you're lifting. So by doing squats, the amount of pressure that's going on on your body it's strengthening every single part of you, every part of you, and you're getting added benefits inside of those. Added benefits that only make you stronger, make your tendons stronger, make your muscles stronger, make you look younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's nice. Oh, Rick, and for example, for those who want to do, like what, what kind of what you did, the challenge, can they do that, but not if squat with another type of exercise? You definitely, you definitely could do any type of exercise. I mean, if you want to do, uh, Pull-ups, you, you, you did pull-ups. And, and I mean, 44 years old can do 17 pull-ups. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. How many could you do when you started? I couldn't even do one. And I was, I was using assistance it's, with the bands. <laughs> and all of a sudden, then I could do one. Then I could do three. <laughs> then I could do one. <laughs> Is it what? Then I could do four. <laughs> and then, you know, then the, the eight. Then eight becomes 11. And yeah, it's a graphic that yeah. goes like deals, right? But it, That's right. It's growing, right? Yes. It never stops, right? Uh, it's like it's like a stock. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a stock. But you know, if it goes down a little bit and you just pull out, you only get what you got there. Exactly. I mean, 17 pull-ups at 44. That that's an example. Yeah. But what will create uh, a good symmetrical body for anybody I got it. is a squat because we're made to stand upright. Got it. And so if we can strengthen the muscles that help us stand up straight. That's good for the human body. That helps us. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so uh, you know, crunches, it makes us crunch, you know? Yeah. Uh, just doing a pull-up, I mean, it, it may not work your legs. It may not work your rhomboids. So I believe as a platform, now that I've, now that I've I mean, really been around the world and trained with just incredible individuals, the squat is an incredible platform. If you add that into your life, it will pay dividends in your health for the rest of your life. One thing I want to touch on here quick, I know, um, and you do this a little different for me, see, is your dietary principles. You're not loading up like crazy on protein and that kind of stuff. That's, that's right, I'm not. I, uh, I, I focus a lot on micronutrients. So there's, there's two types of nutrients that, the, that we're looking at. Macros, which are the big ones, which are your proteins and your fats and your carbs. Well, most people are like, man, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna cut out all my carbs and then starve myself and then I'll get skinny because one of the three will be gone or, or vice versa. But that, what they don't realize is that there's all these micronutrients that are taking care of you all the time. They're, uh, they're, they're the vessels. They're, like, they're so crucial to every part of your health. They're what carry the protein down to your quad to heal it. They're what bind things together. They're what pull the inflammation out of your muscles and put it in the lymph so that you can get it out of your system. So I spend a lot of time focusing more on micronutrients. I, I eat a very, very normal diet. Uh, I mean, it, it, as far as juices and things of that nature, I drink a lot of juices and I drink a lot of, 
I, I, I take in a lot of micronutrients. But I, my focus is not, I'm going to just smash protein all day long with, with nothing to carry it to any part of my muscles. You got to think of it like, like those, those micronutrients are like buses, right? And those, those proteins and those fats and those carbs, those are like people. So you just dump that protein into you and then there's no buses to take it where it's got to go. You don't improve. And even if you do grow, you may not be healthy. It may not be strong bonds. So nutrient wise, juices, uh, study up on micronutrients. Follow me on Instagram. I post a daily nutritional value every single day on my story. Something to help you get 1% better, you know, just, and they're simple like how, uh, an apple, it, it hydrates you on the cellular level. Good. Water, it has to go through your whole system, has to work its way through, but an apple, the way that it's put together, it'll go right into your body. So it's a great, great little tips, really easy things that you can follow, um, but if you really want to improve your health, you got to look up micronutrients. Cool. Enrique, how many times per day do you eat? You know, I, 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 I graze all day. I, I, uh, it's, it's, not a specific, it's not a specific order. It's not a specific time that I lift. It, none of those things are the factor. You know, I, I have to work. I have, I have uh, family obligations. I have things going on. So, you know, I, tr I eat three meals a day, but my lift could happen like My lift could happen at 11 p.m. on Friday night, like it did last Friday night, you got it. Uh, or it could happen at, at you know, 6 a.m. before I go to work. It it doesn't really matter as long as I get it done. I got it. You know, you 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 gotta you gotta set yourself up for success and find that find that time period, and you gotta put a marker on your life and say, I'm doing it. No matter what happens, no matter how it goes, no matter who's mad at me or who's upset or what's gonna happen. I made a commitment, and I'm going to stand by my okay. commitment. Oh, Rick, and you can use this mo movement even if it's not for lifting, right? For yeah. example, you, you can say, yes. oh, I'm going to learn a new language, and I'm going to get 1% better every day. I'm going to try to learn a new word every day. So Yes, yes. The, the capabilities are endless. You, you can do anything you want to do. And, and this, squat, this squatting, what has happened for me, it's, it's been incredible. In just a few years, I have been able to explode. My goal was to squat 500 pounds in 500 days. I mean, I thought that was pretty outrageous, right? And you got to think, I was going through a divorce and my brother had just died. And I mean, it was a wild time in my life. And then to be like, I'm going to squat 500 pounds in 500 days. I surpassed that number by over 100 pounds, by over 100 pounds in that 500 day period. Uh. But my numbers were skewing like this the whole time. You You, uh, the average Olympic gold medalist, okay, they, they have trained for four years, six hours a day. My point is that you can do anything at any time in your life. It doesn't matter when it is. You want to start something? Today is a great day to get 1% better at that. Does, you don't, it doesn't have to be this lifting. It doesn't have to be jujitsu. I got it. It could be anything. Yeah. Michael told me a quote also that I never forgot. It. People overestimate what they can do in one year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's a lot about it as well, right? Because 100%. Yeah. 100%. I mean, you, you, 10 years, that's 3,650% better. That's, yeah, exactly. well, that's good. Man, that's awesome stuff. Any other question, Michael? Uh, were there some other points you wanted to touch on? Like some things that, You know, just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be perfect. There's a, uh, you, you've heard there's no, there's no perfect time to do a great thing. You know, it, it, there's the days you're just not going to feel right. There's days it's just not going to go right. But, but you got to stay consistent. And if you stay consistent, you can, be, you can be just like us up here. You can be three black belts going after their dreams and, and doing whatever, whatever you really want to do in this life. And uh, I mean, we put this together. I've, I've been lifting. I wanted to do this lift. I'm lifting in my garage. You can do it. You know, you find a way, uh, start with what you have and, and find a way. I will say this is one of the, the coolest settings we've ever been in. I mean, I don't know if uh, 
someone wants to pan the camera around, you can see like this is literally his garage, and he yeah. it's sort of just it just it's about it is a garage. It's a garage, yeah, and, uh, awesome. but but look what he did with it. It's amazing, and this is what you went from being a pretty average squatter to holding the Nevada state record in about a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. doing what everyone you, says is stupid to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You and and at the and at the time, I was I was not in a great place. You can do it. Yeah. You can do anything, and and I I just gotta say, guys, I I'm honored to have you guys here. I know I know you guys work with so many people and you you there's so much knowledge out there and there's so much so many places you could be spending your energy and time thank you so much for yeah, coming here you, working so with my team working with myself i, I i'm honored oh, to be a part I, of your team one of the coolest experience for me too because uh, it's different we, we should most of the times we should instruct you just instructional videos and this was different i mean seeing you lifting like 400 pounds was 485. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it, it is. It's, it's so wild to me, guys, that, that I, went from, I went from the spot where I... So I've trained jiu-jitsu now 26 years. Yep. I started when I was six years old with Pedro Sauer. Then I, I wrestled with the greatest wrestlers ever. They run Penn State now. If you know anything about wrestling, Kale Sanderson, Cody Sanderson, Casey Cunningham. I mean, we're talking the greatest wrestlers. And then I end up... My first book, we do... 1% better every day I'm lifting. Yeah, all right, so. And then I'm doing it with like the greatest jujitsu site, period. It's, 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 it's weird how this world works, but, but it, it goes the right way. Yeah. Thanks so much. We're super excited. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.